If you're truly serious about filmmaking with your consumer camcorder, you need to get a 35mm lens adapter. Granted, the device will cost hundreds of dollars to make or thousands of dollars to buy, and it'll make your camcorder a magnitude more complex to use, but your video will magically and automatically look just like film, as long as you remember to shoot in 24p mode, of course. <laughs> Coming up, I'll show you how 35mm lens adapters work and give you a rough but realistic idea of how you can construct one for yourself. Selective focus control is a highly desirable artistic device in both filmmaking and photography. Granted, there have always been hacks like Ansel Adams who intentionally like to keep everything in the shot in sharp focus, but his snapshots have always been considered trivial and unimportant anyhow. Small consumer camcorders have small apertures with inherently deep depth of field that tends to keep everything in focus. Previously in the depth of field demystified segment, I explained exactly how this works. Executive summary? To exploit selective focus control, you need to get your subject as far away from your background as possible and then either one, zoom in, or two, get the camera nice and close to the subject. 35mm cameras, film, and lenses have potentially much shallower depth of field and greater creative and artistic control over focus than most camcorders do. Unfortunately, you can't just add an adapter to the front of your camcorder and screw your 35mm lens into it. This simply won't work. Instead, what we can do is project an image from our 35mm camera's lens onto a ground glass screen set with millimeter precision exactly at the focal plane of the lens. This increases the size of our imaging plane from the typical 1 6th inch camcorder CCD to that of 35mm film, which will give us the depth of field flexibility we're looking for. The projected image will be upside down, but that's easy enough to correct in post, even if it makes shooting a pain in the ass. Now all we need to do is shoot the projected image with our camcorder. We'll mount the focus screen in an adapter tube and screw that onto the front of our camcorder, again with very precise positioning. Most cameras will require an additional adapter ring or two, and some cameras might even require an additional macro lens so that the camcorder can focus on a screen that's positioned that closely. This extreme close-up creates another problem, however, as microscopic imperfections and motes of dust on the focus screen will be plainly and distractingly visible when magnified like this. The fix to this is to either vibrate the focus screen or rotate it in such a way that the imperfections are blurred and hidden, which means we need some type of motor, housing, and power supply for the adapter. As you might have guessed by now, you're definitely taking a quality hit by shooting an image projected on a semi-transparent vibrating piece of glass instead of just shooting through a lens. And now our 35mm lens adapter camcorder is complete. Bang completely unbalanced, awkward, and ungainly. The entire contraption needs to be mounted on a sturdy tripod. This one here would never work. So now we have an expensive, precisely machined, mechanically complex 35mm lens adapter on the front of our camera that will degrade the objective technical clarity of your image and make shooting an entire magnitude more difficult. That being said, and despite my sarcastic tone, when used correctly, 35mm lens adapters do produce some astonishingly gorgeous images from small format camcorders. Just go to Vimeo and search for 35mm adapter to find tons of examples. Artistically and creatively, the 35mm lens adapter is a beautiful, brilliant device, as long as you know what you're getting into. There are adapters that you can buy online, Letus adapters, for example, start at about $1,000 just for the adapter. The actual 35mm lens is not included. Red Rock Micro has a complete package with lens support rail system included for about $1,800. Again, 35mm lens is not included. Of course, you could build one yourself. There are literally dozens of tutorials and complete plans available online. Being a bit of a gear slut myself and a big fan of DIY guerrilla filmmaking, this looks like a really fun weekend project that's probably going to come in at under a hundred bucks. Just don't tell my girlfriend I borrowed her camera. All kidding aside, please, please keep in mind that the 35mm lens adapter and shooting in 24p film mode for that matter will not make your video look like a Hollywood movie. There are no magical devices that can do that. Well, except maybe for a 16mm Russian film camera that you can get on eBay for about 400 bucks. 
even in the best, most cinematic Hollywood movies. Depth of field is not something that gets used all the time. And there are certainly styles, shows, and shots that would gain nothing by using a 35 millimeter lens adapter. Okay, let's wrap this up with two free and easy ways to get 35 millimeter shallow depth of field look with your current camera. The first method is to separate your subject from the background by as far as you can and then either zoom in or get the camera really close to the subject. See depth of field demystified for more. The other way is to fake it in post. Just create a mask around your subject and throw a defocus filter on the background. Okay, it's a tad more complex than that and drawing a mask frame by frame is incredibly tedious and it only works on certain shots and it looks completely fake and crappy if you don't spend time on it. But then again, it is a free artistic option. And whether you spend $2,000 on a commercial 35 millimeter lens adapter, build one yourself, or just practice free techniques with your current camera, artistic options are always great to have. <laughs>